Well, all right. Good morning, Laura. How are you? Good. Yourself? Good. Thanks. Hey, I have uh, Laura Price. Is it Price? Yep. Yeah, Price with me. Yes, I thought. Uh, Laura Price with me uh, here from um, from DeWise, and it's not DeWise Manufacturing. It's DeWise Metal Solutions? Metal Solutions, yeah. All right. Rebranded, yes. All right. So, um, and she's here to talk to me today, uh, uh, with me today, about employability skills, and uh, which is why they're so critical and important uh, in the workplace and what we in education could and should be doing to help prepare. So uh, the first question I have for you uh, is, what are some of the struggles that you're facing uh, when it comes to either interviewing or hiring young people today? And if you can, give me a specific example. Sure. Um, I think it starts right at the beginning. Sometimes it's just a matter of them actually following through on an interview. Um, you will schedule with uh, some and they do not actually show or um, you call and they do not respond, uh, whether they're still interested in, in being interviewed or not. So that initially um, can be a challenge with some. But I think one of the things that we see internally is that um, we love the enthusiasm and the excitement of the next generation coming in. However, um, sometimes there's that understanding that they lack, um, that it, you're not going to become president overnight, that you actually have to go through some steps of understanding how to um, what the policies and procedures are, some of our ISO and quality documentation, um, operating certain machines, whatever the case might be, that it is a, it is a bit of a, a process in understanding that with their safety in mind and with the process of understanding our parts and products, that it just, everything doesn't happen overnight. So it's, it's, it's exciting to have them inside, but it's also getting them to be rational in that they're not gonna become president the next day. No, that's, that's a good point. Um, yeah. I, so a, a lot of our young people today are thinking that they're um, jumping right into leadership roles and, and it just doesn't happen and they don't want to work their way up. Right. Um, so what skills would you say that you're finding to be most lacking? Because I, I already heard of like just even showing up, but among those skills that we might call employability or essential skills, which are some of the ones that you find on a consistent basis most lacking? Sure. Um, I certainly think everybody feels communication, but maybe I take it slightly different. Um, we don't mind texting here. We have the ability for our, our teams to, to text in and let us know if they're absent. But I think it's the general communication in, at the higher level, just being able to let us know if you're not going to be coming in on any given day. Um, if there is something going wrong with a machine or your next uh, your next person who's coming in behind you, letting them know what is happening with the certain parts or products. It's, it's bigger than just that they um, don't know anything but texting. Texting doesn't really bother us. I'd really be great if they text um, and told what was going on. But it's just, it's, it's surely uh, at the higher level, it's just a lack of, they, they keep it inside. They somehow, it feels like, assume you should know. Um, and that's really not true. It's actually getting it out that uh, that communication from them. So, so I'm going to follow up with that. That's a good point. And you and you did start to say that people assume we have things we assume people should know. But why do you think that is specifically regarding communication and in terms of like just the hey this isn't working and passing it along to the next person or hey I'm not going to be able to come in until all such. Why do you think that things that we would say are common sense? are clearly not common sense and need to be taught, but why is that a struggle today? Is it because they are afraid afraid to tell us something that they don't feel confident? Like what, what are you observing? I certainly think um, fear. You're coming into um, a place where there's a lot of generations. Um, there's people who may look like their parents or their grandparents, and there could be a connection that um, they feared letting somebody down. Um, I also think, you know, you're coming from an educational setting that has been very regimented for you. You've, you know exactly what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, how it needs to be done. And if you don't do it, they're coming to you and saying, you didn't do this. That's not how it is in, when you get out of K-12 um, education. It's not as functional. We require you to communicate back to us on when something's not done versus we following up with you or we don't we may have deadlines but if you're not meeting those deadlines 
it's having you communicate to us that something's wrong, that something's not happening. Um, and so I, I think sometimes it's a matter of just, they've been so used to a certain way of doing things for um, however many years um, that they come out of it and it's no longer quite as functional as, as um, I guess, as systematic as it is in the K-12. Mm. That's interesting. I think that's really valuable though for us to know in education and to figure out ways we can do that. It is hard because uh, education definitely is a system and it's a system that's been around for a long, long time. So I think mm -hmm. we feel like if it's not broke, then don't change it. But clearly something's being, has been broken a little bit and that, and that lack of uh, ability on our students to, to, to take the initiative to, to be proactive. Mm -hmm. um, when I, what, what I'm hearing from you is some of the things that I see in things like classes that do project-based learning or problem-based learning or design thinking tend to put the learning back on the students and mm -hmm. ownership back on the students do seem to be building those skills more so right. than maybe some of the traditional sit and get type responses or classes. Yeah, definitely okay. agree. So, um, so another question to follow up with that is how has, and you've talked about how it's impacted maybe the next person, but from big picture, how has um, these, these types of issues impacted your organization and impacted your culture? Well, certainly it requires us to look at how we manage a business differently. You're, you're always looking that next generation looks and thinks and feels different than, uh, than the first one. It's a little harder, um, I think, sometimes in our manufacturing world to um, always get people to look at things differently because, right, that machine is still doing that same function. Well, that next person should do it. But when you're talking about people, we're not all the same. So it requires us to educate our leadership more and more um, than I think ever before on how it is to have that emotional intelligence, how, how to handle um, just working with those various generations. Uh, for us, it's had to really be more, um, I, I guess, uh, responsive than ever before on how it is to work with that type of a, um, the, the various generations I have in one setting. Okay, interesting. All right, so you've given me several examples, <clears throat> but I'm gonna ask you, can you provide a story or an example? Um, I guess just the one that stands out the most to you and probably some of them run together, but maybe just that one where like you were just completely shocked. Like, I can't believe that employee's lack of career preparedness or understanding or just self-awareness. Like one thing that like, did that just happen? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so over my years, I've had a, a, a number of very interesting situations. I think one that has always stood out to me kind of goes along the lines of what I had said in my initial answer and, and wanting to become president. I literally had a young man who was out of high school um, who had just been introduced to the president of our company. Now he's the CEO. And at that point in time, he's introducing our president's very, our CEO is very engaged um, with the, the community. He's talking to him, interested in understanding. And this young man says to him, I'm gonna have your job someday. And while he was very gracious, um, the, the CEO, I, there was that moment where I think he looked at him and thought, okay. Um, and it might be possible. You don't wanna stifle somebody's dreams. But you also want to be like, okay, maybe that wasn't the best way to introduce yourself and put your best foot forward at that moment in time when you're meeting uh, an executive level leader who's very interested in who you are and what you are and to tell him you're going to have his job, maybe not the best way to start your career here um, or anywhere, maybe. Right. That just rings sounds like to me that that young person said like that really sounded good in my head or mm -hmm. uh, I saw E and, and it looked really like dramatic, but uh, in real right. life, it doesn't play out the same way. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's, you know, again, you don't want to stifle the ideas, but you also want to be like, eh, maybe wasn't the, the best way of going about it. Right. So um, I'm going to flip the script just a little bit. And uh, if you could speak to our educators now, what would you say to us um, who, and to try to convince us of the critical nature of making sure that students are graduating with these skills? Like, why is it so important for us to help make sure we're preparing our kids for these careers, whether they're going to a four-year degree or going right into the workforce? Yeah, well, I think looking back on a, a couple of things I stated, one, that communication, we can never 
underestimate the value of two-way communication, of being able to respond and be responsive, um, being able to get them to do some public speaking, getting out of their comfort zone and, and working with um, people across various different functions, I guess, maybe I could say. Um, but I also think going back on what I said earlier, uh, the, the young men and women coming out today are extremely um, used to a, a world where everything has been given to them in a, in a manner that this is what's got to happen. This is what's got to be done. So I think there's a bit of a lack of critical thinking and the ability to um, kind of be proactive in what they need to do because they're waiting for somebody to tell them what to do. And that's very hard in our industry and probably any industry. I, I don't want to speak for them all, but to really get them outside of just learning in a very functional manner, getting them to be responsive for their grades or what they're turning in or why did they do what they did or being able to give them maybe not so um, defined requirements, but let them think or ask questions or um, be able to kind of try to critical think, what is it that that teacher wants? Like, what, what are you requiring of us? Getting them to, I think, more engaged in that process would help them to be less likely internally here to wait for us to tell them every step of their process. Hmm. That's good. All right, I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna also ask you now to reflect back just for a second, looking back on your high school self, and maybe this kind of falls in line with the last question, but looking back on your high school self, what advice or suggestions do you have for teachers that might've helped better prepare you if you're looking back, like if I only would have known this, I think this would have helped me a little bit better. And maybe that would be the same for today's kids. Yeah, I think the self that I, who I was back at that time, I was very fortunate to have some teachers who just listened to me and um, actually were the real reason I'm where I'm at today because they just, they frankly, um, they listened to what was going on and what I was saying that was of interest because I didn't know. And I think that's a, a, a challenge that I see in a lot of K-12 now. They don't know um, the professional roles. They don't know the trades. They don't know enough about what um, employability is, really. What does it mean to get beyond the K-12 system? And um, so really to be listening to that young man or woman and what it is that they're telling you that they have enjoyed doing or don't enjoy doing or being able to talk more um, in the exploratory well uh, way of, you know, what is out there in terms of um, jobs and careers and not just um, four year, but what's really out there. And really that's something I convey back that my best experience in high school was because somebody just simply was listening to me and guided me. And because of them, that's truly where I'm at today. And I, I always tell people, you just don't know if you're not listening. We have two ears, um, use it twice as much as our mouths and really listen to what those young adults are saying. That's good. All right, final question for you. Regularly hearing from employers how important a great culture is to a company. What do you think is more important to you and your organization? I, uh, stronger technical skills or these employability skills? Absolutely, the employability skills. I can train internally to any piece of technology I have in here. I, I truly believe that. Um, and I think a lot of employers feel that that same way, or at least the ones that I'm, I'm talking to. This employability, the ability to communicate, to be here, um, to be self-aware, it's so important to us right now, um, more than ever before, because we certainly lack that. So the technical skills I feel are very easy for us um, internally to be able to coach somebody on. Awesome. Hey, Laura, I want to say thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you coming on to do this interview. I appreciate your responses. And um, I think that we in education need to be taking, listening to these and, and taking these in and saying, well, what do we do differently to make sure we're doing a better job of preparing our, our young people? So thank you for your time. You're welcome. <laughs>